Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Nort, and today we have so much information to talk to you guys about. I promised you guys that I would be back with a part 3 on this easter egg, on this huge easter egg in GTA 5, and that's exactly what we're doing. Because today, guys, we have some pretty big information and stuff to show you guys, because believe it or not, I do actually have evidence and proof that CJ is Franklin's dad in GTA. And I guess to some of you guys, this hasn't really come to a surprise, because it's always been a rumor in in the community about whether CJ and Franklin are related, but in today's episode, guys, I'm going to put forward such a good case that I promise you guys 100% you're going to end this video thinking, damn, CJ is definitely Franklin's dad, and, and this easter egg is huge, Rockstar Games if you're watching this, in fact, I know you guys are watching this video because I'm pretty sure if you put easter eggs in the game, you're going to love it when those easter eggs are cracked and solved, and today, guys, this is going to be amazing, I've spent the entire day researching this. I spent so long trying to get all the information possible for this video, so if you guys could be ever so kind enough to take a few seconds out of your day to drop a like on this video, that would just be absolutely amazing, guys. I'm not going to set a like goal on today's episode. I've been setting a few goals recently and stuff, and you guys have been smashing them each and every time, so thank you so much. Today, though, guys, I'm not going to set a like goal, so let's just see how many likes we can get. I'll let you guys go crazy with that. I've written down everything on this piece of paper. It's titled CJ is Franklin's dad and my handwriting really isn't that good, but uh, I've actually done loads and loads of research, like I've done loads and loads of copies of paper, narrowing everything down just for this one video, so I can make sure that I tell you guys all of the necessary information, because oh boy guys, there is a lot of information, so in order for you guys to understand everything, you're going to have to watch the entire video, it's kind of one of those piece together things, so if you guys skip through, if you guys go to the end and stuff, then it probably won't make sense to you guys, so I'll try and make this as short and as easy as possible, so let's just get straight into this, and we're gonna go all the way back to GTA San Andreas, and if you guys have played GTA San Andreas, then you guys might understand the plot, the storyline, everything going on in San Andreas. Personally, I'm just gonna put it out there, guys, I haven't played San Andreas too much, I've played enough of the game, but I haven't played it too much, because I was, of course, really young when San Andreas came out, but I do own the game, and I have played it a little bit, and I do have some understanding on the game, so for those of you guys calling me out saying I'm not an expert on the game. I'm not saying I'm an expert, I'm just using all of the data and information about San Andreas, and I do apologize if I get the small details wrong, but I'm pretty confident in this entire case. So let's just get straight into things, guys. And GTA San Andreas was set in 1992, and CJ was, of course, the main character. I'm pretty sure you guys do know that already if you have played San Andreas, and I'm pretty sure if you guys have played San Andreas or not, every single one of us know who CJ is. He's the main character in GTA San Andreas. And at the time when you're playing the game, CJ is actually age 24. Just a little bit of information about that in case you guys are interested. So after doing some research on the GTA wiki, I was looking into CJ and everything based around GTA San Andreas, and it basically says that in 1985, CJ and the Grove Street families, the group he was part of essentially, were at their peak of their power. In 1985, they were at their peak. And then sometime around 1987 to 1992, everything started falling down around them. So that's kind of like a backstory on GTA San Andreas on the entire plot in case you guys were wondering. So just keep that timeline in mind guys of 1985 to 1992, okay? Okay, so moving on to the next point, I thought it would be necessary to go over to Grove Street because this might kind of re-trigger some memories and stuff because if you guys have played San Andreas or if you guys haven't played San Andreas, I'm pretty sure all of us know by now that both games, both GTA 5 and San Andreas are set in the same location, which is why the entire jetpack mystery is so huge because in GTA San Andreas you could go to the base, you could go down the elevator and you could get the jetpack. In GTA 5 you can go to the base, you can go to the elevator but you can't go down the elevator so you can't get the jetpack. This is why the jetpack mystery is so big and this is purely because both games were set in the same location of San Andreas. If you guys want to google more similarities and stuff you guys totally can do. Rockstar Games love putting easter eggs from San Andreas in GTA 5. In fact you only have to go over to Franklin's old house, look in the sink in the bathroom, and you'll find toothpaste saying CJ's toothpaste. Like, there's so many connections to CJ in GTA 5, and this is because both characters, Franklin and CJ, both grew up in the exact same area. To make this even more interesting is that they both look alike, and they both have extremely similar personalities. The voice actors for Franklin and CJ are also related in real life. Uh, that's just a cool bit of information. I don't think it relates to anything, but I thought I may as well tell you 
you guys because it's cool to know that both voice actors, CJ and Franklin, are both related. I believe they're cousins or something. I'm gonna go over to Franklin's old house for this because you won't actually find any information about Franklin's mum. If you guys find a photo, it's most likely going to be of Denise, her friends, maybe Franklin's cousins or something like that. You won't find a single piece of information about his mum, his dad, or anything else like that. And the only information you do find out about his mum comes from Denise, as well as his dad as well. It all comes from Denise. You don't find any information in game. So this means that you don't actually get to know who Franklin's mum is and who Franklin's dad is. This is the mystery Rockstar Games left in GTA 5. They didn't explain to us, they didn't give us clues or anything about who were Franklin's parents in GTA. If you go into Michael's house, you can see a photo of Michael's parents. If you go to Trevor, you can see Trevor's mum at the end of the game inside his trailer. Franklin is the only character out of the three who doesn't have an obvious parent. He doesn't have anyone who we find in GTA. That's something we have to find ourselves. So just doing a little bit more of a backstory, Franklin never actually met his dad. He ran away before he was born and he doesn't really remember his mum as well because she ended up passing away when he was very, very young, unfortunately. So he was basically taken under the care of his grandparents and then eventually when Franklin started stepping out of line, he ended up going over to Aunt Denise and she looked after him. So that's kind of like the backstory of Franklin in case you guys are wondering. So Franklin literally doesn't know who his parents are whatsoever and the only information he gets about them is from Aunt Denise. So this next part of the video is going to focus on Denise and Denise only guys because if you have played GTA San Andreas and some of you guys did mention this in the live stream we did a few days ago but in GTA San Andreas Denise is actually in that game but under a different name. She's actually called Denise Robinson. She was there very early on and bearing in mind that timeline I did also state as well. She does also mention frequently that she rolled with the Grove Street Boys. She was very close to CJ as well in San Andreas and she does have that history with CJ and his group in GTA San Andreas. If you guys have played San Andreas, you will understand that Denise had kind of like a reckless life and I'm pretty sure that if you know what life she had, then you would understand why she changed her surname. I'm not going to go into the details and stuff, but if you guys do any sort of research on Denise Robinson, you will understand what kind of life she lived in San Andreas. And this is why she changed her surname and now she's called Denise Clinton in GTA 5. And just taking a look at the GTA wiki, something else which I think you guys are going to really find interesting, and this is something I want you guys to remember as well because we're going to come back to this a bit later on, but you take Denise on a number of dates in GTA San Andreas. When you're playing as CJ, there's so many different dates you can do with Denise, and when your relationship is about 40% complete or 40% there with Denise, she will then start inviting CJ to her house for coffee. And this is after CJ has taken Denise for a few dates and stuff. I think it's about 40% in or something. But when she starts feeling comfortable with CJ, she will start inviting you in for coffee. Now, I just want you guys to remember that as we go through this video, because that is just a huge Easter egg in itself, which Rockstar Games have cleverly and very secretly added into GTA 5 to let us know that both Denise's are the same despite having the different last names they are the exact same character and this is why guys because if you take a look at Denise right now she literally fits the exact same age she would be if Denise Robinson was in GTA 5 because Denise Robinson would have been a similar age to CJ at the time CJ was 24 at the time and this was between 1985 and 1992 if Denise Robinson from San Andreas was in GTA 5 she would be in her 50s and if you take a look at Denise, she is in her 50s as well. And bearing in mind, Franklin was born in 1988, so she really can't be that young. So she right now is at some point in her 50s, and you really just need to look at Denise or take a look at some of her friends to understand that, because all of her friends were a lot older and stuff. So let's take a look at a close-up on Denise's face, guys. And if you look at this, this is what Denise looks like in GTA 5. Now, if you were to go into GTA San Andreas and take Denise Robinson's face and put it over Denise Clinton, you will notice that both characters characters look extremely alike. The only difference is that Denise Clinton is slightly more aged than Denise Robinson because she is more aged because this is 25 years later. So both Denises are the exact same. The only difference is by the time GTA 5 came around, Denise changed her name to Denise Clinton instead of Denise Robinson. But I am fully convinced that both of these characters are exactly the same and I'm pretty sure you guys are as well. Just taking a look at the faces, I mean it makes so much sense. But we're not done yet guys. We are not done yet. Trust me, everything is going to make so much more sense, guys. So, a tiny bit more information is that in San Andreas, Denise mentions that she did have three children and she gave them all away. So, because of this reckless lifestyle, it led her to having loads and loads of kids
kids, which she had to give away because she didn't want to raise them herself. So just bear that in mind as well, guys. Okay, so we're going to go back over to Franklin, and this time we're taking a look at his car, because if you guys look at the number plate, it will say FC 1988, Franklin Clinton 1988. It basically states when Franklin was born, because he was born in 1988. Now, if you guys use the timeline in GTA San Andreas, you will know that CJ was at his peak from 1985 to 1987, and at some point between 1987 to 1992, everything started to fall underneath him. So, this timeline does fit, and it does show that in 1987, CJ could have done something in order to become Franklin's dad a year later in 1988. So, whatever CJ did, we don't know exactly, but the timeline does seem to fit so well, because Franklin was born in the midst of the entire timeline of GTA San Andreas, and there's so many rumors going around that community that CJ went to a party in 1987 and actually ended up meeting a girl. Now, whoever that girl was, no one really knows, but there's so many speculations within that community about how that girl could have been, in fact, Denise Robinson, because she had such a reckless lifestyle at the time, and she spoke about the Grove Street family so much, and I believe she's also the only partner CJ had who phoned CJ more than any other partners. No other partner did, so she really liked CJ at the time. So the way this theory goes now, guys, because we're going to get into this Easter egg theory, and there's actually an Easter egg backing this up in GTA as well, so this theory is kind of like backed up by an Easter egg, so I'm not even sure if this is called a theory, it's, it's kind of like an Easter egg in itself, but the way this goes is that now we know that Denise Clinton was Denise Robinson in GTA San Andreas, it makes so much more sense piecing everything together, because CJ and Denise Robinson really liked each other in San Andreas, they met each other so many times, and the chance that they did actually end up having Franklin is extremely high, but something even more interesting, let me see if I have this text, because I probably will have it somewhere. Typical way you treat your aunt. Franklin, you ain't been home. I got worried. Thought about calling, but you never pick up. So I did some digging and found you ain't been home because you ain't home no more. You're living up in Vinewood Hills, etc. Now she gets extremely annoyed at Franklin in this, like really, really annoyed to the point where you think whether this is kind of like how annoyed you should be because she is only Franklin's aunt. She's not his mum. But the way she's acting in this kind of gives you the hint that she's kind of acting like Franklin's mum in GTA because she literally says at the end of this, uh, let's see. Yeah, this is it. Well, as I always say, you come from trash. You stay trash, and that's what you is, boy. I loved my sister, but boy, did she make some mistakes, including in having you. She literally says that her sister made a mistake having Franklin, which is something you just don't say because it wouldn't bother you that much because he's not really your son. Or is he? Because if you think about it, Franklin never met his mum, you don't know any information about her, and Franklin's dad ran away from him. So not only does this give the clue that Denise is actually Franklin's mum secretly, and she gave Franklin to her sister because she did have kids, it's also interesting to see how Denise treats Franklin as if Franklin is literally her son, because she gets extremely annoyed at Franklin beyond any sort of boundaries you would expect Denise to get angry at him. Like, Denise literally disowns Franklin in GTA. It is crazy. So now we know all of this information about Franklin and Denise. Yeah, I think we've gone through everything. I'm now going to go into the Easter eggs, and this is when things are going to get extremely exciting. So remember all that stuff I was saying about how Denise in San Andreas would invite CJ in for coffee when they were about 40% into their relationship or so when she was getting comfortable with uh, CJ? Well, if we actually take a look online and go on to Life Invader and try and find Denise Clinton, there she is, and just keep going down. There it is! If you take a look at this one post, no wonder I never get a second date with that boy walking in every time I have a man home for coffee. For coffee. For coffee, guys. Bearing in mind that in GTA San Andreas, she would invite CJ over for coffee in GTA San Andreas when they were partly into their relationship. In GTA 5, Denise Clinton, the same character with a different name, does the exact same thing. Both characters look exactly the same. They live in the exact same area. Denise Clinton is the same age Denise Robinson would be if she was in GTA 5, and everything about them is the same. They have the same personalities everything adds up, and Denise Clinton knows information she shouldn't know, and she treats Franklin like her own son, even though publicly Franklin isn't. And the fact Rockstar Games added this in, they didn't need to add this in, they had no reason to add this in, but they did, and they referenced coffee once again, which is what Denise Robinson did in San Andreas. So, they left this in for a reason, and this is one of the biggest clues as to Denise Clinton being the exact same character as Denise Robinson in San Andreas with only a different surname. 
name because she of course changed it to protect herself from the past she had in GTA San Andreas. This is extremely interesting, but we're not done yet though, guys. We're not done yet. Not only is this Easter egg in GTA 5, we're going to go back over to that code, which we took a look at a few days ago, and we actually cracked half of it in a live stream a few days ago. Yeah, if you guys take a look at this, you can see the Easter egg already. If you take a look at this entire highway, there will be two blocks, which are a darker shade to the entire highway. And if you take a look at this block, it will give you guys a series of numbers. Now, if you guys convert these numbers to letters in the alphabet, and the way we ciphered this is we actually got these numbers and we worked them out by the spaces. So one and two are quite far apart, but two and five aren't, which means that this is one, 25, 8, 24, 23, 6, 24, 20, dash 3, 10. And Rockstar Games underlined 3, 10 and underlined 1 as well to show us that this was a sentence and 3, 10 had some huge significance. Now, if you guys convert this into letters in the alphabet, you will get A, Y, H, T. And then if you do the dash, it will say C, J, if you guys work that out. And then that's the letters you get. And then if you convert those letters into words, if you go down and work all those letters into words, it will basically say all you had to do was follow the damn train at CJ. And now I'm not going to say this is the most famous line from San Andreas because I'm pretty sure all of us know what the famous line is. But if it's not the famous one, it's the second most famous line from GTA San Andreas, okay? It's the second most famous line. And regardless, I'm pretty sure all of us have heard this line somewhere. In fact, Rockstar Games include this in some of the missions. In Derailed, for example, it will say better than CJ if you get one of the gold medals for landing on the train first time or something. But if you go over to this code, this code is the one which we got stuck on, and we actually found an answer for this in the stream. Now, something I want to mention is that both of these Easter eggs are only in PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. They're not actually in Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. And the reason behind this is because I believe Rockstar Games only added them in to next generation consoles and PC because it's the only way we're able to crack this Easter egg because this right here is actually coordinates, and you can't find coordinates on old generation consoles, but but you can find them on PC. So let me start going through this code and let me explain exactly what this is. And I'm also going to write down this code here just so I have it so we don't have to come over to this location. So if we also write down this one as well, we have 4, 9, 6, minus 19. Now, if we actually input this as coordinates, let me show you guys what we get. There we go, 4, 9, 6, exactly. You guys can see that. And then if we lift ourselves up and go above the map, guess where we're going to spawn? We spawn right outside Franklin's house. This is Franklin's new house in GTA, right outside his house, like literally right outside his house. And something else even more interesting is that if you guys take a look at that other the code, the M012C79511, if you actually type that in onto Google as a hex code, guess what color we get? And for those of you guys who don't know what a hex code is, it's basically a color code. Every single color you guys will ever know has a hex code. So there can be different shades of color. There can be thousands of different shades of green, of red, everything else like that. But if you guys use a hex code, you can get the most accurate shade possible. And Rockstar Games have done the same thing in this game because each character has their own different set of colors. Trevor has orange, Michael has blue, I believe, and Franklin, of course, has green. And if I just type in this hex color now, oh my days. Okay, this is good. This is good. 2C7951. So I've just typed that in, and we get the exact same green as Franklin owns in GTA. The exact same color Franklin is all about in GTA. The same theme, everything Rockstar Games give Franklin, it's the exact same color. So not only does one of these codes bring us to the exact same coordinates as Franklin's new house, the code right next to it also gives you the exact same color as Franklin's theme color in GTA 5, which is just extremely interesting. At the bottom of the ocean, I explained this in a video a few days ago, I will link it at the end of this one, there is a tank and on that tank is a code on there and that code is the hex color for the same color as the Rockstar Games logo. Rockstar Games hide these easter eggs in GTA 5 in the most secret and hidden places. Not only have Rockstar Games linked up this easter egg to Franklin and CJ, I think they're hinting something to us that CJ is related to Franklin. The first easter egg says all you had to do was follow the damn train CJ, Insta 
instant CJ Easter egg, and I wouldn't be surprised if CJ was hiding in GTA somewhere. But the second Easter egg is all about Franklin. Unfortunately, we do not know what the M01 means. Maybe that could be Mission 01 or something. I have no idea. But the M01 stands for something, and that is yet to be cracked. But everything else seems to link up CJ and Franklin together as if they're sort of related, and this is because they are. I don't know what to say. I literally don't know what to say. This is incredible, and I'm just so happy with this Easter egg. It's such an awesome Easter egg. So if you guys did enjoy today's episode, be sure to smash that thumbs up button. Let's try and smash that goal of 5,000 likes, guys. I know we can do it. In fact, I'm not going to set a like goal in today's episode. I said at the start that I wouldn't set a goal, so we're not going to set a like goal. So you guys can decide on the like goal for today's episode, guys. So just go crazy on the likes. And if you guys agree with me, let me know in the comments section below. I'd love to know your thoughts about this as well. And of course, I recommend you guys also subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on awesome stuff like this on a daily basis. And just make sure you guys let me know your thoughts in the comments. It's extremely important. And once again, I want to know how many of you guys agree with me because this Easter egg, this entire theory is so backed up that it's pretty much proof in my eyes that CJ is Franklin's dad. So once again, guys, let me know your thoughts in the comments section below alongside anything else you would like to see me do on my channel. And you never know, guys, your idea might make it into another video. But guys, thank you so much for watching. My name is Nort, and until next time, stay absolutely awesome. I'll see you guys in the next video.